Hey everyone, Shane here with RVs of America or ROA. We have a pretty exciting video to share with you today. As you can see, we're over at my house. I'm just in front of my garage and behind me is all of my camping gear. And in front of me, we've brought over an Explore at my house that we're gonna pack up and get ready to go and have some fun. Okay, so this video today that I'm gonna be doing with you is actually going to be a walkthrough. This is a video that we've created exclusive for RVs of America customers, and those are our roamers. So this is an, uh, an exclusive roamer video for you to know from start to finish how to get your trailer prepped and ready to go camping. So today we're gonna go over how to fill, it up the, fill up the water tanks, you know, get the power going. We're gonna go through some of the components, show you how to hook up, get ready. Then we're gonna go out and get it set up to go camping. So we'll go through leveling, how all the components work, the awning comes out. We're gonna go through all the details and get you guys ready to hit the road and have a great time. Okay, the first and most important thing when you're gonna go camping is power. You wanna have power. So electricity. So before you go, you're always gonna to wanna to make sure your batteries are completely topped off. Now the Explorer comes with a power cord. Uh, and right over here, you're gonna come check this out. This is a 30 amp uh, connection. You're gonna wanna have to get really close to this and come take a look at this. Okay, so as you can see, this is the power cord that the, the trailer comes with. It has a little uh, twist on right here and then these three prongs. This is gonna be similar to like a dryer plug in your house. Uh, and it's a 30 amp breaker. So we're gonna go right here and we're gonna twist it kind of, so it kind of goes in and twists a little bit and then these threads go on and then that kind of holds it in place so it can't pop out easily. And then you're gonna wanna, you know, one of the most important things as a camper that you're always gonna wanna have is tools handy, right? This is a brand new deal. So I'm gonna always bring a knife, drills, screwdrivers, uh, if you're, if you ever own a trailer or an RV and you don't have tools, you shouldn't own a trailer or an RV because there's always going to be little things that you're going to need to fix, repair on the fly, on the road, and having a nice little tool to help you is always going to be vital. So now let's go get this plugged in. Now, as you can see, this is a three prong. This is going to be the most standard um, plug you'll have at um, campgrounds. Uh, most smaller generators, like a 2000 watt generator, won't have this. If you get a 3000 watt generator, you will have this. Your house most likely is not going to have this by your garage. Some houses, if you're lucky, you do. You'll want to long term probably get this type of plug with a 30 amp breaker installed at your house. Um, but what we have is really cool is this little guy. This is a reducer that takes it from 30 to 120, which is your house, a regular outlet plug. So you're going to just want to pop this in and then I'm going to go grab an extension cord in my garage and we're going to plug the trailer in to get the batteries charging. Okay, I got my standard extension cord from my garage and I'm going to just plug it into my outlet at my house and I'm going to run this extension cord over to the Explore trailer so we can get it plugged in and make sure the batteries are getting charged and fully topped off for our camping trip. Here we go. Now that we got everything plugged in, and the power should be going in. We want to get inside and check and make sure everything looks good. And I'll show you that. Before we go inside though, I want to talk a little bit about this door. Um, there's a few little things. Uh, this door, sometimes it's pretty hard to pull and some people think it's locked. It's actually not. It just has a very tight seal. So sometimes if you press a little bit and then pull, it will actually come out pretty nicely. Um, the other thing that I'm going to talk about is the key, the deadbolt key. Um, and some people get a little confused is because it's actually in reverse. So if you come and take a look at this, you'll see it better. We're going to put it in and you would think intuitively that back would be unlocked, but it's not. Forward is actually unlocked and then go back to that spot, push and pull. Okay. Now you're going to want to make sure this door opens up all of the way because these stairs will actually not come down. They'll hit the door right here. So we're gonna make sure it's opened all the way. And then you're gonna grab these stairs and there's a little lever and it pulls and it drops down. Okay, now you do not wanna walk on these stairs yet because they're just hanging there and they're not designed to support the weight of your body standing on it. So there's two things you can do. You could lower 
the explorers because the suspension actually lowers. Or you can grab these pins. There's a pin right here on this, and these actually come out and will change the height. So this pin pops out right there, and you can pull this pin out, and you can actually go down and you can adjust it down at the bottom right here. And that pin is gonna pop right in there and you'll get to the right height. And now you have support. And this is on both sides of the stairs, so you wanna do both sides. It is also a little bit easier if you do it while it's still in the up position, you can adjust this track. It's a little bit easier to do it that way. Now that our steps are down, I just wanna note something that you'll wanna make sure of is this, this piece of metal, this has to sit flesh on the stairs right here. Otherwise the door will hit this and it won't shut. So sometimes if you don't put these stairs at the right height, maybe your stairs are looking kind of like that and see how there's a gap right there. And then the door will come and hit and it won't shut. So you'll just want to make sure you get this adjusted and where it's actually sitting flesh here and where it's sitting on the ground and with good support. And the cool thing about the Explorer is you do have the ability with the suspension to lift up and down, which I'll show you right now. You have this little tool right here. Now you'll want to make sure you don't have the stairs out or down when this goes up or down is because it can push on the stairs. But like I said, you could use it to adjust the stairs. So right here, you have an up and a down button. If for whatever reason it's not working, you can press and hold this blue button and that will resync the remote with the system. So now you can just press this and you'll notice, but let's put the, I'm going to just hold these up so it doesn't hurt them, but you can press this and you'll see the whole trailer is lifting now. And now our stairs are no longer touching. So you can bring them back down until they get and that's a good spot for those. And it's also flush. So we should be good right there. So pretty cool system, unique to explore. You're not going to get this on any other trailer that I've seen. While I pack, I actually want to pull the awning out because it's pretty hot today. Um, but I want to talk about an advisory. You can't pull or shut the awning with this door fully out. The door has to be partially closed, right? Because I've had the door out where I was started pulling the awning in and the door was out and it got caught on it and it ripped my door um, weather stripping. So definitely don't want to do that. But um, the, the switch is right here and I'll press the switch and we'll let the awning come out. Okay, so this is the awning switch right there, and it's just a uh, rocker switch that goes up and down either way, and up is to go out, down is to come back in. Okay, um, this awning actually comes with uh, an adjustment pitch, which is nice. If it's raining or if you want some extra shade, you can actually come to this and this has like a gas a strut, strut assist that locks it in place in a lower position. And now the awning has a slope to it and that will create runoff rain in this direction or it also just creates more of a shaded area down here. And you can do that on both sides and adjust it to a lower setting or you can go up higher, whatever you want. So that's a cool little feature about this awning that you can use. We've kind of got everything set up to a point. Now we want to come in and check the electrical. Something that I needed to note, probably should have at the beginning, is right here you actually have a battery disconnect switch. Um, and as a matter of fact, the suspension, the awning, the lights, nothing will actually work if this is not engaged. So you can see the ceiling lights are on currently with that little illumination. If I press this, that dis disengages the lights, the suspension won't move up and down, the fridge won't work, nothing turns on. So this is going to be like your storage mode, right? So when you're getting ready to use your trailer, hopefully if it's parked next to your house, this is going to be in storage mode. The trailer will still be plugged in because you'll want a, a, it's like a trickle charger. You always want it plugged into 120 no matter what, but you can have everything turned off before you go camping. Like I said, if it's not plugged in, if it was in storage, you're bringing it home. You're going to turn, you're going to turn this guy on and then you're going to plug it in. And then that will allow it so you can adjust the suspension and do the awnings and get inside and make sure everything is functioning properly. We're talking about power right now. This, everything right here is all your switches from your outside switches, your rock lights, your compressor. That's your air compressor on board. You have an awning light, you have perimeter lights, cargo lights, and these are your ceiling lights in the trailer and your awning. But once again, leave this on, 
when you're out camping, when you're using the trailer, this always stays on. Some people will think, oh, I'm gonna go out for a hike and shut that off and it's a quick, easy way to turn off all your lights. No, because that will turn off your fridge and everything else. So you'll always wanna leave that on when you're using the trailer. When it's at home, it's in storage, you can turn this off to store it, but make sure it's plugged in at your house so it's getting a trickle charge and maintaining your batteries. The solar is also maintaining your batteries, which is a separate system. So you're always technically getting power either from the sun or your house, but it's always good to have it plugged in because it, it, has, a, it's a, it has a smart charger, so it will know when it needs a charge and when it doesn't. So just some basic things right there. This is off in storage on when you're using it. It's very, very important that you have power and everything's functioning properly. So I'm going to briefly touch some of these and go into a little bit of detail. Stay tuned um, and go to your exclusive Roamer library. And what we'll do is we'll roll out really in depth info on each one of these later on. But this is gonna be kind of the basics to get you going and on the road. Um, and, and really honestly, it might be sufficient indefinitely. But for those who wanna know more of the details, we'll get that into a, the private video library. So um, right here, this is going to be your main power monitoring system to make sure everything's good. This is going to be your solar charge monitoring system. And then this is your inverter and also a charger system too. So let's talk about this guy right here. So this is your really quick and easy monitoring system. When you get your trailer plugged in, if it says 100%, 100% you know you're charging at 100%. You also just want to make sure it's over 400 amp hours and you'll know that your batteries are completely topped off 100%. You're going to get the most accurate reading when you actually un plug the trailer if you see this drop pretty dr drastically once the trailer's unplugged then you'll know you're actually not fully charged you plug in the trailer it's going to bump up to 100 percent. it's going to take you about a good day to charge your batteries from dead to full and and then over here you can see that you're getting some solar you're getting four watts you know and right here it's it's fully charged so the solar system is going to probably turn off and it's not bringing in as many watts as it could because it doesn't need it because you're pretty much 100 percent charged and then this says, yeah, you have 58 hours until you're empty, which is not so accurate because we're plugged in. Once it's unplugged, these readings are changed. The most important thing is you want to just make, your, make sure you're at 100% when you're unplugged and hitting the road. Make sure that's charged all the way up. And as far as these buttons, you don't really need to touch these buttons. These are more for to change operations. The one button that you might want to touch is see this light. When it's charging, sometimes it flashes and illuminates and it's kind of bright at night if you're sleeping. So if you just press these two back arrow buttons and hold it for a second, it'll actually turn off the light. And then you don't have to have it on while you're sleeping and it bothering you. So good to know right there. Now let's talk a little bit about the solar guy. So this is now your solar charge controller, which is going to, um, this is what's going to be regulating your solar panels on your roof, which is giving your batteries charge. Right now we're at zero everything. And the reason why is because our batteries are fully charged. So the solar charger is saying, hey, I don't need to charge your batteries anymore. Everything's at float and everything is looking good. So let's move down to here now. So this is your inverter slash charging system. The one at the top, you might say, well, wasn't that also your charging system? That's more of a monitor. This is where you're going to actually um, look at more things to um, maybe change your charging rates, turn on your inverter to get power to your outlets if you're off-grid. Most trailers, you can't run you know, something off-grid from an outlet unless you have an inverter. Uh, so this does come equipped with an inverter and a charging system. Now, you can look at this and you can see you know, you're plugged in and you're getting 1.4 amps, which is very little but it doesn't need any more because you're 100 percent charged your voltage is 14 14.11 14 which is great we got lithium batteries on board and that's what you want to be you want to be above 14 above 13 you know 8 13 9 when you're charging so as long as you're above 14 you know you're getting a good charge it says stage float this is the battery stage so batteries have three stages of charge you have float absorption and bulk don't get too confused. It's just three different stages. One of flow is kind of like a trickle charge. Absorption is the stage right before a trickle charge where you're getting a good amount of power into the batteries, but not a full push of power. Bulk is when your batteries are very, very low and you need a lot of power and, and they're charging the batteries as fast as they can. So, uh, you know, the only thing that I would know is like, depending on your state of your batteries, if your batteries are pretty low and you do plug your, um, you plug your, you know, you get your outlet and you plug it into a 120. It's because the trailer is designed for 30 amps. That's what the plug, the power supply 
asks for is 30 amps. So for this thing to work properly on bulk and like the, the highest charge rate, you need 30 amps of power coming to your, to, to your trailer. So now if your batteries are really low and you plug it into your house, potentially if it's only a 120 outlet like what we plugged in today, that's not a 30 amp breaker. So if my thing goes into bulk, what's gonna happen potentially is the house on my breaker is gonna trip and I'm gonna lose power, right? So there's something really cool about this charger is you can change the you can change how much it's actually pulling from your house so it doesn't blow even though it's asking give me as much as power as I can to charge your batteries to 100%. You can reduce that. And so let me show you how to reduce it really quick. So you're going to have these arrows that go up and down that you can get different readings from. But what you're going to do is you're going to want to be on shore power and shore power this comes more from the marine and yachting industry where you know your boat is in the water and you have no power and you take a cord and you plug it into the shore right and you get power from the grid so your that's that's essentially what that means is power from the grid your shore power is your house so once you get to shore power you're going to click enter and right now it's set to bring in 30 amps but that's assuming that you're plugged into a 30 amp plug or breaker but we're not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring this down because that breaker, that plug that I have in my house really actually is probably a 20 amp breaker, but it has multiple receptacles in my house. So I don't want to necessarily try to pull 20 amps. I'm going to just drop it down to 10 and then it's going to charge. It's going to, then, then it actually won't charge as much. It did go to bulk for a second, then it went back to float. Um, another cool area that you can use this is if you are actually off grid and you're running a generator and say your generator is very small and you keep on blowing the breaker on the generator, right? You can adjust that charge rate down lower so you can use a smaller generator to charge your batteries and run things. So that's a really cool feature that this trailer comes standard with. Now this is your charger and this is your inverter. So if you press and hold this button, you're gonna turn off your charger and then you won't actually have any charging. Oh, sorry, actually you press it and then you do yes or no. Yes, I wanna turn it off and then that shuts it off or you um, inverter, same thing. Um, so now the charger charges off and it's not going to charge at all. So if I plug it into my house, zero charge. So now you might ask, why would I turn, turn off the charger? Well, say if you're out camping and you have a smaller generator and you plug it in and you want to run the air conditioning unit, if the charger's on, you're going to be pulling power from your generator to charge the batteries and run the AC. And that might just overlay overload your AC unit. Or for my case at my house, if I want to be packing the trailer with my AC on when it's hot outside, I might want to turn it off, turn the charger off for a little bit, run the AC while I'm working up a sweat and packing everything. But of course, don't forget to turn this charger back on and make sure your batteries are topped off at 100% before you go camping. So we're going to definitely want to do that because I want to make sure we have 100% batteries. And we'll keep the charge rate. I'll, I'll bump it up to 15 so it will charge a little faster. And then now up here, we have the inverter. What is the inverter? The inverter is every outlet in this trailer would not be functional unless you were plugged into shore power without an inverter. So the inverter, what it does is it takes the, the lithium 12 volt batteries and turns it into 120 volt batteries so that you could plug, plug in a blow dryer or a coffee pot or whatever you want to plug in. Okay, now that we've checked all of our power system, the battery disconnect is on, let's get inside and start turning on all of our components and get ready to go camping. So it's always good the day before to get your fridge turned on and working. So here your fridge is right here. We're gonna open this up and I'm gonna show you how to turn it on. So here's the fridge dial, it's very complicated. There's an off switch and then you turn it off and you adjust it to whatever temperature you want it. All the way to the right is the coldest. Like I said, super complex. There's a few little tips that I want to give you about this fridge. First of all, it's a 12 volt fridge, no propane. You know, most trailers in the trailer industry are putting propane fridges, which require a little flame in the back, which things fly in there, fires happen. We've, uh, over the years, there's unfortunately been fires that have burned trailers down. Cool thing about a 12 volt fridge, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. They're also extremely efficient. They cool down way faster. Propane fridges, typically, you need to give 24 hours prior to cooling. Also, propane fridges don't work good at high elevation, and they also don't work in high heat or low or in cold temperatures. These things are unbelievably durable. 40 below zero works. 110 degrees works. 
They're very, 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 very good fridges. It, you don't have to be perfectly level. The propane ones, all the chemicals make it so you have to be perfectly level. Not necessarily with these refrigerators. Now there is one drawback about them is they do tend to consume more battery power. Luckily, we have lithium, right? Uh, with, with standard batteries that come in almost every trailer that you'll see in America, this fridge is not a very viable option, but since we have lithium, it really is. Um, but as a, as a note, I would turn it on full blast to get it really cold at your house while you're packing it up for storage, which we're gonna do right now. Get it on full blast. Once it gets down to temp, it might take a few hours. You might wanna do it the night before. Once you pack your food in there, leave it on full blast for a while because when you're opening and shutting, it takes a lot of energy to get it back to temp. Once it's to temp and you're out camping, turn it down. Don't have it on full blast. We have had a few experiences with this company, this manufacturer, Furion, with the fuses blowing when it's on full blast all the time. So just turn it on full blast to get it all cooled, get ready for camping. And once you're actually out camping, turn it down a little bit. You can, I, I found myself running it, you know, it does have like a little label off grid. I find myself running it a little bit colder than that. But if you go too cold, it actually can start freezing things and then you potentially will blow the fuse. The last thing that I wanna talk about is these handles. There are clips right here and there's a latch right here. You just wanna make sure that this gets on the latch. And sometimes right out of the factory, these are not adjusted perfectly. This one is right now um, and you gotta push, but you just wanna make sure they go in and clip all the way, have no issues. Probably uh, as a personal owner, might wanna get something to latch it to the, the wall right here, just as an extra precaution if you're going down bumpy roads. I wouldn't trust those latches 100%, but I, we haven't had issues with them in, unless we didn't latch it properly or made sure everything was lined up. So anyway, that's really the gifs of the fridge. So let's move on. So when you're out camping, there's a bunch of things that you definitely want for those nice camping trips and conveniences. We got a refrigerator, so we got our food. We got power, good. Now we wanna be able to cook and have water, right? You wanna wash dishes, take showers, and do all of those good things. Now, there's an issue is we don't have any propane. So I'm gonna first show you how to get the propane set up, and then once we get the propane set up, we can cook. Also, while we're outside, I'm gonna show you waters, because right now, we don't have any water. And we wanna have all of these things while we're out camping. So let's get everything set up and get ready to go camping. Okay, so the main reasons we're gonna need propane for this trailer is three reasons. The furnace to run the heat, the water heater, and the stove and oven. So that's, so that's what you're gonna need propane for. Luckily, we don't have a propane fridge and that runs off a battery. So this is your propane tanks. There's a little strap under here you're gonna have to unhook and then you just lift this whole thing off and there's your propane. Uh, it's pretty easy to modify this. Uh, we could even do it for you if you wanted to get an extra and we could actually make this bigger and you could put the larger tanks. Because you don't use the refrigerator and the insulation is so good and the furnace is so efficient, I would, I would recommend keeping this at first and then maybe down the road upgrading if you really wanted or if you were going off grid for a long time. But here's your propane tanks. Let me show you how to get these all set up so you can go and get propane. Okay, the trailers don't usually come brand new with propane or maybe you're completely out. So uh, what, what's going on here is this is an actual adjustment and adjusts to which side you want the propane to feed from. So I'm gonna have it feeding from whichever direction I want. Now this, we're gonna make sure these are closed. These things untighten right there. And then you're gonna unscrew this guy. And then this is gonna pop out here. And then you can take this propane and you're gonna grab this propane tank and you're gonna go and fill it up at a propane station. Try not to switch these out at like a Walmart or a Home Depot. Home Depot or Walmart, they will switch you bottles it's way more expensive to switch than it is to fill your bottles so it's always best if you find lots of gas stations or truck stations will have a propane fill station and then they charge you per gallon opposed to for a bottle and the fuel and also i've heard uh, maybe it's not totally true but i've heard a lot of those places that switch them out they don't fill them up completely like you'll only get maybe four gallons so you can go and fill them up and have more propane and it will be cheaper long term so let's go fill this up. I'll go find Ace Hardware is the closest place around here. That's where I usually get them filled. 
okay, we've filled up our propane, we've turned it on, it's this, this can be hand tight, and we've switched our regulator to pointing into this direction. So now, if I were to go inside and turn on the stove, or the water heater, or the furnace, technically, everything should be working because of the propane is now turned on. Before I go do that, I'm gonna put water into the trailer because you never wanna run the water heater without water and propane together. So I'll go get the water in it. Once we fill up the water, then we will be able to test all of our propane and water system inside at the same time before we go camping. Here we go. Okay, so got my hose kinked because I didn't want to get everything wet. So now right here you have your gravity fill and you're gonna pop this guy out and whoops, get some water out um, and start filling it up right there. And you just rest it in there and it just sits until it's full. Um, it's actually not a lot of water coming out. I just like to maybe do like 50% of whatever your water pressure is. Because if you shoot a ton of water in there, it's kind of like when you go to a gas station and you put your gas, sometimes you can put your gas pump, your the pump into your thing and it like turns off even though your tank is not full because there's just some air pressure in there and it's put, kicking it back. So just turn it on half and let it fill up slowly. Also, if these tanks can expand, right? And I've seen them break. Not I have not seen that happen on an Explore, but I've seen it happen on other trailers that we've had recently in the past, not an Explore. And they just expand and break and they fall on the ground. So it's just better to not put so much pressure shooting in there where it has a hard time um, coming out of the, the overflow. It does have an overfill or an overflow, but sometimes the pressure in and pressure out is just not the same. So just turn it on half. Right here next to it, you also have a city. And that would only be applicable if you were at a campground that had pressurized water continuously. I do right here, right now, but we're going camping off grid where we have no city water hookups. So I'm gonna fill up the tank and make sure when you do use the city water that you always use a pressure regulator. Most of the trailers are rated for 40 to 50 PSI of water pressure. In some campgrounds, they can be pushing out, you know, 80, 100 PSIs, and that could potentially break um, water lines or fixtures. So you always wanna make sure you regulate the water down with the pressure, water pressure regulator. And so now that we're filling this up, I'm gonna, let's jump inside and I wanna show you where you can watch the water, where it's, where you can monitor it filling up. Okay, we're inside now and we're in the kitchen area, just below the sink area. And this is your water gauges and some control panels. So right here you have a little button and this is your fresh water. And as you can see, it used to be E, which is empty, one third, two thirds, and then full. So right now we're at two thirds, so we're almost full. And right here is your gray and it's empty. Now, once this gets all the way full, which is actually just said it is full. So I'm gonna run outside and turn the water off and get it turned, um, get it pulled out before it overflows. But before we do that, I just wanna show you this. You have your water pump. And once your water, once you have water in your tank and you turn on the pump, it's gonna pressurize all the lines. You'll hear it running. And once you hear that pump turn off, you'll know all the water lines have been pressurized. Right here, this is your water heater. So that gives you hot water. And then right here, this is your tank heater. And that's only when during winter time when you're going somewhere extremely cold and you don't want your water tank to freeze. So don't leave that on. These are the only ones you're gonna wanna turn on when you're out camping. A good rule of thumb is in transit, make sure those things are turned off. You don't need to have them on during transit. So let's turn these on. I'm gonna go and turn off the water before it starts overflowing and going all over my ground. And then I'll come back in and check all the systems and we'll make sure everything's working. So I just shut off the water on, at the spigot of my house, pulled the hose out, and we've the, the tanks are now full. I've turned on the water pump and I've turned on the water heater. Before you go camping, it's smart not just to fill up and leave. It's always good to test everything and make sure everything's working. So let's turn it to cold water. Look, we got water, woohoo! So this is water coming from the tank, from the water pump. And now let's turn on the water heater. Now, so it's cold right now. The water, the on-demand on water heater, it senses pressure. It's probably really hard to hear that, but I heard it. It just kicked on and you can hear a flame kicking on. And now it's whew, burning hot actually. 
yeah, it's really, really hot. So, perfect. Our kitchen sink, cold, hot, is good. Now you can hear that thing. It sounds like a, a jet engine turning off. Is and it's done. Um, good practice is to always open the cabinets. Just look inside. Make sure there's no leaks, right? You know, water. You're, it's a. This is a house on wheels. It's like going through an earthquake every time you take it camping. And so it's just good to do a visual. Sometimes check the fittings. Make sure everything's tight. Okay, now I'm going to check the bathroom sink, the shower, and the outside shower. Make sure water's coming to them. Make sure I'm getting hot water. And as long as everything's working good and I don't see any leaks, pretty much ready to go camping. I will, after that, then check the propane system. Okay, and the last thing inside is the shower. Uh, this is a really cool nozzle because it actually can turn on and off and have less pressure coming out while you're showering to conserve water. Instead of sh doing it everywhere in the sh shower basin and having to wipe it up, I just do it in the sink since I'm doing testing the sink too at the same time. So that's pretty easy. So check this. And then the last thing we'll do is go outside and check the outside shower. Now we have the outside shower. This is a really cool uh, sh little shower. I love using this outside shower, but there you go. You got the cold you can turn it on and off. The nice thing why I like it is because if you get a little outside shower tent, you don't fill up your gray tank and it just gives you more capability of staying off grid longer and not filling up your tanks. So that's the cold water um, and you can turn it on and off. Now, when I turn the hot water heater, you're gonna be able to hear the actual water heater engage from out here and that's kind of what I mentioned before. So let's turn it on really quick. Um, and you'll hear this almost sounds like a jet engine kick it on and there's the flame so you know that it's working when you hear it kick on and also if you wait for a second the water gets burning hot it's burning hot right now like you don't want to shower in this that's too hot so really cool you know everything is working now we've checked the entire water system we've gone through every single faucet turned on hot and cold and made sure the hot water is working so now we know the water is good ready to go and when we get out camping we're not gonna have an issue where we get somewhere and we don't have water and it's, or it's not working or the water heater's not working. So always do this before you head out. So let's get to the propane now. Okay, so we've checked all of our water and all of our water is working. And the next thing we wanna check is our propane because you wanna be able to cook, take warm showers and have heat if you're going somewhere cold. We already know that you can take warm showers. So I'm assuming all the propane system is working because we already heard the, the water heater working. So we already kind of checked the propane while we were doing the water, but let's just make sure every, everything works really quick. You're gonna push in and go like that. And that one's working, that one's working, that one's working, there you go. And then the oven. I don't always actually check the oven when I go camping. I rarely do, because I don't use the oven a lot. But it usually works. If these are working, the oven works. So um, the oven's easy, same concept, just turn it to this and make sure you strike it and it will light up too down there and you can see the burner. So now let's go and check the furnace. Okay, now we're gonna turn on the furnace. You're gonna wanna press this mode button. It's a power on and off button and the light will illuminate and it goes to, it gives you fan options. You can scroll through those and it goes to AC and then you go to furnace. You'll adjust the temperature up or down depending on what you wanna do and I'm gonna bump it up to maybe 85 degrees because it's really hot right now and it's not going to turn on unless, unless it's turned all the way up. And we're just doing this just to test it, make sure it's working. So it's going to take a second to engage and once you hear it kick on, there we go. So this furnace is actually ducted in five different exhausts or um, vents but this is the one right by the furnace, the thermostat below the fridge, and you can just reach down here. It's kicked on and it's blowing out hot, hot air. Since it's 95 degrees, I'm gonna turn this off and get the AC going. But before I turn on the AC, I'm gonna turn off the charger because remember, I'm plugged into a small outlet at my house. If I turn on the AC and the charger at the same time, it will blow the breaker at my house. So I'm gonna turn off the charger and turn on the AC and make it cooler in here while we pack. Okay, now that we've had everything, gone through all our major systems, the, the last and most beautiful thing about having a trailer is having a place to do your duty and not in the woods. So you're gonna wanna check your toilet. You're gonna wanna make sure you have one of your toilet cartridges. 
and also make sure you have an extra one or two depending on how long you're going. You'll also want to make sure this toilet is fully charged. It does come with a battery and there's a plug and since you're at home you can plug it in. There's a plug back behind here in the wall and you can plug it in and make sure it's fully charged before you go on a camping trip. We've had this toilet. We've probably used it half a dozen times before needing to charge it. So it does last for a while, but just make sure you plug it in. Don't leave it plugged in. Just charge it the night before, let it charge overnight, and then you should be good for a few camping trips and before you need to charge it again. Okay, and if you recall, I am sitting on this toilet. You don't have to test it out before you go camping, but you can if you want to. Uh, this toilet is pretty cool. If you didn't see our previous video where I tested this toilet by throwing a bunch of stuff in it, you're gonna have to go on and check out that video. I threw in some rubber duckies, uh, some uh, other various things. Definitely wanna check that out. This is a really, really cool toilet. Huge fan of the toilet. But now that we got the toilet all figured out, you're gonna have a really good camping trip because you're not gonna have to go in the woods. And that's what we all want a trailer for. That's usually one of the biggest reasons people buy a trailer. The bed, the toilet, and all the other extra nice comfort creatures. Creature comfort, comfort creatures, creature comforts. Is that how do you say that? I forget, anyway. Okay, there you go. So the last thing we're gonna check is make sure your fantastic vent fan is working. Okay. And the nice thing about the fan is it is accessible from when you're sitting on the toilet because that's really when you want to use it for sure the most, um, but you'll use it a lot. So it is a max air vent fan, which is really cool. It's above the shower. Now, if you crack a window over by the bed and you turn this thing on and have it sucking and with that cracked window, it will create a draft in here. That's pretty incredible. It's really easy to use. You have an on and off button right here and that's off. Now you can hear it turning off, turn it back on, and you're going to have the fan speed and it goes from 100 all the way down. The CFMs on this is pretty incredible. I can't recall what it is, but they're, they're amazing. These fans are huge and you can do recirculation so you can bring it in or out. It also has an auto mode where you can actually set the temperatures to be able to, so if you're out hiking or something and it gets to a certain temperature and the trailer will automatically open and try to cool off the trailer. This is a really cool feature. On the, some old trailers that we used to sell, we would put these in all the time because we love these. Uh, the standard fans that you get in most trailers are they're cheap little computer fans that really don't do hardly anything. These things are amazing. Anybody who is a full-time Boondocker RV will tell you, RVer will tell you, these are a must. So, good thing these come stock. We're almost done. We've checked all the components. Everything's working. There's some last little final things we need to do. Check off the list. You probably want to write a checklist. Uh, for If you're actually a roamer, uh, and you probably can contact us and we'll be able to send you out a private checklist for our roamers only. But if, or you can just watch this video and write down the checklist yourself. But we wanna make sure everything is secure and tight before we start packing, hook up the truck and get on our way. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure this is shut. Otherwise you'll have this banging all over the place and it's glass and you don't want that to happen and have it break or fall off the track. These when they fall off the truck are really hard to put back on. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure the bathroom door is shut completely.
something really important about these windows that you're going to want to be careful about and be aware of is it does have three separate areas to lock up. And when you hear that click, that means it's locked and gauged. Some people come and try to yank on these, whether it's yourself, your friends, your kids, your grandchildren, tell them not to yank on it. You just go past the click and then it will drop itself. So, so as you can hear, there's a click right there, stop, and it's locked in right there. Go up a little bit, there you go. So you go past the click and drop it down. Another really important thing is these have two points that you can lock. You can lock them inside this little groove or this track and that's not shut all the way. That's There's a crack and you're gonna get some air in here. And especially if you're going down a dirt road, you're gonna get a lot of dust. So you wanna definitely make sure you bring out, bring it all the way in on the inside of that track and lock it in. Now it's actually locked and you're not gonna get dirt or dust inside the trailer. Okay, so we've got everything tucked away inside, latched up. We've checked all of our systems. The last thing I want you to always check is your tire pressure. It's extremely important to check your, check your tire pressure frequently. The, the, the worst thing is having a blowout when you're going down the road. Um, luckily, Explore has given you four extremely heavy duty tires. The hubs, everything on the rims, everything is overrated on this trailer by almost double or triple or quadruple actually. Um, so I'm gonna check the tire pressure and it looks like we're sitting at 50 PSI exactly which is great, that's where you wanna run these at. You're gonna run them around, uh, you know, max cold is 50 PSI. Usually that's what you wanna run out of tire, uh, tire on a trailer. You could run them probably around 45, but I would not run them less than 45. Keep them around 45 to 50, and you should not have problems with blowouts or tire um, issues. When you go off-roading, obviously you can deflate them a little bit more, especially because you have four of them and they're so heavy duty, They'll they have the weight capacity to reduce um, or lower the pressure. Behind these, I wanna talk about behind this, there's some Allen wrenches, you can pull this back. And these actually have an easy lube system where you can actually pump in grease and it actually circulates in and out. We'll have a video upcoming about that, explaining that even more. But they're easy to um, grease, anybody can do it. You can get the gun and the tool. That's not something you have to do every camping trip. And this is brand new, shouldn't have to do this for six months to a year. But you know, every so often you're gonna wanna check that. And they've set this up where it's really easy to access and service this. Um, one of the really cool things about um, Imperial and these Explore trailers is the manufacturer's done a really good job about writing up some manuals on service and maintenance. So this is kind of your how-to get ready for a trip and get going. These are the things that you're gonna check every single time you go out camping. But those more serious maintenance things that you're gonna do you know, every year or so, um, is going to be in the manual that comes with the trailer and if you if you need help you can also text your exclusive tech line here at ROA um, or ask for the access to those private videos and we'll have how to service these and get all of that stuff but really 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 incredible so let's get hooked up to the hitch and then let's go camping Okay, we're gonna hook up now. This is the lock and roll hitch, and it's it's actually pretty easy to hook up. I mean, I'm at an angle, so let's straighten this on, and I'm gonna go over to the hitch on the truck, make sure that's ready to go, and then we're gonna back the truck into it. If you have a backup camera, it's pretty easy. If you're by, your, if you're by yourself without a backup camera, not as easy. 
good to have somebody to guide you. So let's let's go to the truck and show you, make sure that's ready to be hooked up to right now. Okay, so now we're back at the back side of the truck with the hitch, the part that goes into the truck. And this is pretty easy to operate. We're just gonna wanna pull this pin out. This is gonna slide out like that. And then these guys can go like down. And I'll hold on to this. And we're gonna get that lock and roll to slide right into that. Okay, we got hooked up pretty easy. Uh, it took me like two times, maybe. Yeah, I think I came out once actually. And we're gonna bring this foot up. It's easier to do it on the other side, on the driver's side, which is what I would normally do if there wasn't a uh, camera guy standing there with a camera. It's okay, Forgive, forgiven. And then grab that guy right there. I would like to let him rest over there. I'm gonna grab the chains, we're gonna cross them. This guy is gonna go right there, lock in. We're gonna grab our brake controller also. I'm putting it over, put it in right there. And then we need our seven pin. This is your breakaway, your emergency brake away, and your flashers, emergency flashers, blinkers, um, backup lights and everything. And that's gonna go into there. And you'll just wanna make sure you get it past this clip right there, push it in all the way. If that ever doesn't work, you sometimes wanna grease it up, make sure these pins aren't like wampus. This looks really good, it's brand new, so to be expected. Okay, so we're all hooked up. We got, I, I'm gonna go and check the brakes and the running lights, make sure that's all good. I'm gonna lock the main door. We're all packed up. As long as all the lights and brakes and flat and the blinkers work, we are ready to go camping. So not too bad. Okay, the, <laughs> we're at the highest ride height at the moment. This is for off-roading. This is not for towing it down the road. So this is our final portion before we're ready to drive away and go camping for the weekend. It is going to ride best at a, the lower position. So I'm gonna bring it down. The way you're gonna get to the proper ride height is gonna be according to the tongue and the hitch on your truck. You can adjust that, your positions where it rides level with your truck and the trailer at that position, at that part. But the ideal spot for this to be for highway is not all the way at the bottom. I'll take it all the way down. And then I usually lift it around two, three, four inches from the bottom. So we're gonna go all the way down. And it's, it, it's kind of weird is because we're on a hill, so it doesn't look level. But once I bring it up a few inches, it actually is gonna be level with the truck if I were to go out on flat ground. And the reason why it's level is because I've set it up with my truck hitch to be level. And that's the best spot for it to be towed at. You now have the knowledge and the tools necessary to get out on your first camping trip. This is it, we're done, we're ready to go camping now. The, uh, this only took me like 10 hours. Not really, actually. It's probably like 30 or so minutes. Um, Roughly, you know, if I wasn't talking and explaining it and just going about it, it probably takes me about 30 minutes to get it all set up, ready to go. And, and just keep in mind, this would be really the first time of the season setting it up, making sure everything's working. If you've camped in it last weekend and you still have water in it from the previous weekend, you're pretty much just ready to roll the next weekend, right? So it's, it's actually not too hard. You can do this in 20, 30 minutes, not including packing. Obviously, food and all that stuff takes a little bit more time. I, my wife usually is 
finding the food and packing that, packing her stuff, I'm packing my stuff, and we're ready to go camping. So we're gonna go over to a campsite and we're gonna do a quick setup for you. So let's, let's get going, let's go have some fun. Okay, we just got to the campsite. This is kind of where I want to be at. So before I unhook, I'm going to need a level and chalk the wheels. So I'll show you how to do that really quick and then we'll get to some camping. I just found the spot. We got to put some blocks down. This is how you're going to level the trailer from side to side. Um, this way, right? From front to back, you'll do it with the tongue hitch. So we get these little Lego blocks is what I call these or leveling blocks. And we're gonna set them underneath the wheel. You should usually bring a level with you um, or you can install little bubble levels on the trailer itself. Or if you forget your level and you don't have little bubble levels, you can bring some bubbly soda. And this is one of my little hacks. Once I actually put the blocks down and level it, I just put it on the floor inside the trailer and kind of figure out which way is more level. You don't have to be perfectly level, but you get close enough and you'll sleep much better and everything functions better. So we're gonna first drop these guys down here. And that should get us to about the right level. So I'll move it forward. Okay, we're, we're not quite to where we wanna unhook the truck yet. We gotta do wheel chocks, because once you get up on those levels, obviously you don't want the tra trailer to roll forward or backwards, so we'll put these on the other side. But first, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit, because we were in the off-road height, and I wanna bring it down, and I'm gonna open the door and make sure I'm where I wanna be at level with my bubbly. Bring the stairs down. As you can see, they're not touching the ground. It also looks like it's kind of hitting up, kind of going up in the rear end. So let's bring it down a little bit more. And that's actually gonna level the back end to the front end a little bit better. And Okay. That looks pretty good um, from side to side. We're now gonna put the wheel chocks on the other side and unhitch, unhitch the truck and lift the, the tongue, the front of it up a little bit to get it more level that way because the soda was kind of rolling forward. Uh, if, uh, obviously, if you had a bubble level, you would see that too. So let's go put these on the other side. With my wheel chocks, we're just gonna wedge it in there nice and tight and Put that in there, nice and tight. And now we're gonna unhick the truck and pull the awning out, start a fire, and start camping. We're ready to unhook and level the front of this trailer. And you could put a block under there. That way you don't have to have this thing travel as far. 
and you could start lifting it off right now. Make sure you lift those off so it kind of is tweaked a little bit. And now we're going to lift this off until it comes off the truck. There we go. Now we're unhooked. It was a little tension because it was on the hill. It was kind of on a slant, but you should be fine. That's why you chalk the wheels. It's very important to do that. We'll pull forward, park the truck. Okay, now that we got the awning out, gonna turn those lights on. Shut the door. I will adjust this pitch a little bit so I have a little bit more shade. As you can see, the sun's coming to right here. And if you adjust the pitch, it's a little bit shadier. And we'll open this guy, grab some of my firewood, my camping chair. Get set up. Well, we're pretty much all ready to go and camp. All we need is a nice fire. As you can see, most of the prep work is at home, packing, making sure you got water, your gear, once you actually get to camp, it's really only a few minutes to level out, unhook, get the fire going, and start to relax. The only thing I have to, to do now is enjoy my bubbly. And we're at high elevation, so be careful. <laughs> it fizzles. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this walkthrough has been useful especially to our roamers. And if you're a first timer, I know a lot of the little tips and tricks will help you out tremendously. Uh, for some of the more detailed videos, go to the private exclusive roamer library. I'm super excited to see you on a roamer adventure pretty soon. If you're new to this channel, subscribe and notify yourself to see more of these videos coming out in the future. Thank you, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Roamers, especially for your support and for getting a trailer from us. Make it a beautiful day. Ha, 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 ha.